Hi everyone, I'm Rachel with Limbo's product team. Today, we'll be talking about how to add and manage users and configure roles and teams in Limbo. Limbo offers lots of flexibility and customization when it comes to user management. You can permit and limit different features for all of your users, but also configure different permissions for the same user if they perform work at more than one location. Creating custom roles is also available for customers on certain plans. It's important to note that only certain users have access to edit these configurations and user settings, which includes super users and users with a role that has manage users permissions enabled. If you're unsure if your user profile meets these criteria, feel free to reach out to your dedicated Limbo customer success manager for support. Before we begin, make sure to have your users' names and contact information including email addresses and phone numbers. This information is crucial for the user setup process. Let's get started. To begin, I need to access the Manage Users page. To do this, select the user icon from the navigation menu on the left-hand side. Now that we're on the Manage Users page, click Add User. In the new pop-up, we'll need to fill out the user information. It's important to call out that not all users will have access to this information. You can configure specific settings based on a user's role to limit their ability to see sensitive information like employee wages, workday hours, and the ability to make changes to user profiles. We'll talk about that more in detail when we get to roles. Add first and last name, email address, and phone number. It's important to add accurate information here because this is the information that will be used to log into Limbo and send the user notifications about their work. Then you'll need to pick a role, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. Limbo offers manager, technician, and view only as default roles. For now, I'll say this user is a technician, which includes permissions to complete work, but not assign and review the work of other users. Finally, pick a location. If you want to add roles for a single user at more than one location, you can repeat this process once the user is created. Once you've done all that, click add. When you add a user to your Limbo account, They'll receive an email with their username, password, and setup instructions to get started in Limbo. It should look something like this. Once the user is added, we have the option to add more information. Click on the username, and you'll see there are additional fields to further customize their profile. The first new fields are average wage and workday hours. Average wage is used to calculate labor costs in Limbo. So for example, if my average wage is logged as $20 an hour and I completed a PM that took me 45 minutes, Limbo would calculate that it took $15 worth of labor to complete a task. This is essential for reporting. Workday hours are the typical amount of hours this user works in a day. This is helpful to ensure that work is being distributed appropriately based on the number of hours your users can allocate to tasks. Last is the complete task reward message. Task reward messages are fun gifts to make you smile and thank you for all the hard work you're doing. They're automatically enabled for users when they join, but can be disabled here. If a user is a super user, it will also be indicated in their profile here. And you can also make someone a super user by checking this box. You can upload a profile picture on their behalf, but again, this is something the user can do themselves in their profile settings. Now that we've added a user, let's talk about some additional configuration options. The first icon indicates if a user is active or not. You can toggle the user as inactive or active by clicking on the icon. Before you deactivate a user, you should be sure to reassign their work to active users or teams. Keeping inactive users on your account is important for work history and reporting purposes. This also makes it easier to reactivate a user and maintain their work history if needed. And don't worry, your user count only applies to active users so you won't be charged for inactive users unless they're reactivated. The next two icons control user notifications. The mail icon determines if a user is notified via email about tasks, and the bell icon determines whether a user receives push notifications on their mobile device or tablet. One important note about notifications. User notification preferences can be overridden by location-based notification settings. This way, you can suppress users from being pinged about most notifications, but push through certain alerts based on their importance. To configure those, click on the locations icon from the navigation menu, and from the new menu, click Manage. Click on your desired location's name, and in the new pop-up, 
you can configure additional notification settings under the advanced settings and extra email notifications headers. Getting back to the options list, the crossing arrows icon allows you to send a user an email with a randomly generated password. If a user forgets their password, this allows them to reset it. Only super users have the ability to change a password on behalf of another user, which can be done through the lock icon. The pencil icon is another way to enter the user profile and make changes to the settings we created in the beginning. Now that we've added a user, let's talk about roles. Roles are groupings of permissions that permit or limit a user's ability to perform actions and see information about your organization within Limble. A single user can have multiple roles assigned to a single location or multiple locations. Let's take a look at the roles in Limble. Find the settings page from the navigation menu, and once on the page, select the roles tab. By default, Limble offers three roles, manager, technician, and view only. Managers can edit almost everything in their assigned location. This includes creating and assigning PMs and work orders, completing work, creating reports, managing inventory items, and creating teams. Technicians can complete work, see tasks assigned to them, update inventory levels, and view asset information and history. These are typically users who don't need to have the same level of access as managers. View only users can only see a Limble account. They will not be able to change anything in your system, and some of the interactive features may be disabled for them. View only users can see information such as finances, work history, open tasks, and inventory levels. This role is beneficial for someone like a C-suite executive or regional manager who may need to see activity on your account, but not make any changes or assign work. You can only make changes to the view only role with the help of your dedicated Limble CSM. You can enable and disable permissions for the technician and manager roles by clicking or unclicking the box to the left of the permission name. Many permissions have dependencies on other permissions in order to function properly. So read each permission description carefully by clicking on the permission name. Some plans with Limble allow you to configure custom roles. If you're unsure if your plan allows you to do this, check out our pricing page or reach out to your customer success manager to learn more. Creating a custom role that contains a specific set of permissions allows you to assign a role to a group of users without having the time-consuming task of creating a custom role for each of them. For example, you may have three or four users in your finance department who use Limble exclusively to manage purchasing, and you only want them to have access to purchasing related permissions. To create a new custom role, click Create Role. Next, name the role. I'm going to call this Purchasing. By default, all permissions for new custom roles are disabled. I'll go ahead and choose the permissions I want this role to have. Now I can assign this role to my users. You can duplicate the custom roles you created to make the configuration process faster for additional roles. You can also stack custom roles. For example, one of my technicians may be in charge of managing purchasing and inventory, but not managing people. By assigning this custom purchasing role in addition to the technician role, the technician will have the permissions they need to do their job without granting access to certain information. Now that you have an understanding of roles, we'll go through how to assign a role to a user. We need to be on the Manage Users page again, which can be found from the navigation menu. As mentioned earlier, a single user who works at more than one location can be assigned different roles at each location. This allows you to permit or limit permissions based on the work the user does from location to location. You can assign a user a role at a location right off the bat. When you want to add more, go to the Role column and click on the plus button. In this example, Cheddar is already a manager at the house and now I want to add her as a purchasing manager at the zoo using the custom role I made earlier. In the new pop-up, I'll select purchasing as the role and zoo as the location. Then click add. I can revoke the role at any time by selecting the trash can button, which will remove the user and their role from the selected location. Okay, you've got some users set up and assigned roles. Now you can start thinking about creating teams. Teams are groupings of users which can be used to assign multiple users at the same location to a single task. You can create teams based on the kind of work your users perform, like electricians, HVAC, or plumbing. Or maybe you have a morning shift and a night shift, 
and want to create teams based on user schedules. Since team configurations are location-based, you can set up teams by clicking the locations icon in the navigation menu. Use the caret icon to expand your options. Then click teams. To create a team, click create team. Name your team in the new field. In this example, I'll name this team morning shift electricians. Now you can add users to the team. Go to the users section and click the plus button next to their name. From the new pop-up, select the team. Now the user is associated with that team and will be added to any tasks assigned to that team. You can remove team associations at any time by clicking the trash can button next to the team. You can delete teams by doing the same thing. Before we wrap up, let's quickly talk about the difference between roles and teams, as they're sometimes mistaken as the same thing. As mentioned earlier, roles are the groupings of permissions that can be assigned to users. Teams are groupings of users that can be assigned to tasks. For example, Cheddar and Candy are both morning shift electricians. Cheddar is a manager and Candy is a technician. This means that Cheddar has more permissions and visibility to certain information within the app than Candy. But if a task is assigned to the morning shift electricians, they will both be assigned to it. Because of Cheddar's role as a manager, she can make changes to the task in certain ways that Candy is not allowed to as a technician, but they will still both be assigned to and perform work on tasks assigned to the morning shift electrician's team. Thanks so much for watching. If you have additional questions, visit our help center, reach out to our support team, or talk to your dedicated Limble customer success manager to learn more.